five. How could you prove that you are Jesus of Nazareth? Well, from a logical perspective, there's only one way that I can prove that I'm Jesus, who was born in the first century from parents Mary and Joseph and who had a life of 2,000 years. And that is to provide proof of all the people who've known me over that period of time. So in other words, what I would have to do is get my mum and dad, Mary and Joseph, to come to earth. I'd have to get everybody who knew me in the first century to come to earth. And I would have to get everybody who's known me in the spirit world to come to earth and, uh, and say that they have known me and how they know me. Right? Now, the chances of that happening at this point in time are fairly low, although not impossible. There is no other way, though, that, uh, that I can prove that I'm Jesus. Just like there's no other way that you can prove you're Mary Magdalene, there's no other way that Igor can even prove he's Igor. There's no other way that Lena, behind this camera, can prove she's Lena without getting other people. A document means nothing. Like a driver's licence means nothing. It doesn't prove who you are. It only proves who everybody thinks you are. I think that would be totally gnarly, though, when people say, like, how can you prove it? And you pull out a really old, rickety document. <laughs> old, rackety going, driver's licence from 2,000 yeah, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my driver's licence from 2,000 years ago. As if, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's never going to happen, right? <laughs> Um, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> so, so the only possible way for me to prove who I am is to have all the people who have been in my, involved in my life over the last 2,000 years cooperate the evidence of my life. So, I mean, I, obviously that would be fairly compelling because there's a lot of people. You've been a, alive for 2,000 years and there's a lot of people. Of course. Um, but say it was Igor and he brought in five people who knew him when he was a toddler. Yeah. I could just say, well, I don't know these people. I don't... It, of course. So, so can you see that even after all of the evidence has been presented, you could still choose to ignore all of the evidence? Mm -hmm. That's the reality, right? So, so the sad thing about this particular thing is that it's impossible for me to prove my identity to another person unless... I have all the people who have known me for all of my life come to you at some point and talk to you about me and you have to be open to believing them. That's mm -hmm. the reality. Now, on earth at the moment, there's 12 other people who have known me from my first century life. And, uh, and you know, once they work their way through their own issues and problems and emotional issues and their own memories, they will be able to corroborate most of what I'm saying about my identity. However, whether a person on earth believes them or not is completely different. Like, what are they saying about me? That I'm crazy, stupid, delusional, uh, deceitful and so forth. That's what people are saying about me. Why wouldn't they say the same thing about those people? Well, Or even one more thing, and that is... Uh, AJ's just prepped them all, or Jesus has just prepped them all to say that he's Jesus. Manipulated. He's manipulated it all. And Cornelius and myself are often received that accusation. of being manipulated, yeah. right, by myself, which is not true. They don't know. Most people have no idea how we live our lives and what, what kind of character I have. Mm -hmm. um, but they assume that it's true because that's their preferred assumption. They'd like to presume that rather than go, OK, there's people from all over the world who actually know that Jesus is Jesus because they've lived with him for 2,000 years, you know, they don't want to accept that. So they'd prefer not to accept that. So they'll come up with any other explanation. And it's like, and it's like Igor presenting five people, or in my case, I'll be presenting 12 people eventually, probably, that, uh, who've known me in the spirit world, who are now on earth, and everyone will say, that's still not believable. The only other thing is that all the people who are spirits materialise and come to earth so that you can see them and, and then they all talk to you about me and my life and what happened in my life. And I suggest to people if that actually happened, the majority of Christians, for example, would say that they're devil and the demons. Right? In other words, they would not believe those people. The majority of other people would uh, you know, have all sorts of different belief systems about where these people came from and what they're doing. A lot of them would never accept what they're saying. Most atheists would never accept what they're saying, even if it happened. Mm. 
So, so the problem with this identity issue in terms of proof is this. The only form of proof that I can offer that I'm Jesus is the proof of all of the people that have known me since the time that I arrived on earth in the first time and all the people that have known me in the spirit world. And unless you can see them and hear them and unless you can speak with them and unless you can accept what they say to you, you're not going to be able to believe. That's reality. Of course, everyone would, most people would have their own personal measure, wouldn't they? Mm. They would say, oh, well, if he did walk on water, then I'd believe it. Or but that's not logical. Did... It only proves that I can walk on water. Mm. It doesn't prove who I am. If he did speak Aramaic, then I'd believe him. And that's not logical because if I could speak Aramaic, the only thing it proves is that I can speak Aramaic. Or if he did uh, turn water into wine, walk on water and hey, speak, Aramaic. speak Aramaic. It only proves that I can do three <laughs> things now instead of one. <laughs> it doesn't prove that I'm Jesus. It doesn't prove my identity. Logically, it cannot prove my identity. It can only prove that I can do what you know I did. That's all it proves. As I said, I can never be God. I can never do what God does. So a lot of people come up to me and say, what am I thinking now? And I look at them <laughs> and go, why would you think that I'm even interested in what you're thinking now? Let alone... <laughs> <laughs> want to know what you're thinking now and let alone interest and, and let alone can think of what you're thinking now can you think of what I'm thinking now like yeah like again it's because their belief that I am God that I should be able to do these things right and and I'm not God I've stated that categorically but of course people don't want to believe that either like that's how unreasonable people have become when it comes to my identity I feel for you a lot because I can see that on the earth there are so many preconceived notions mm. about who you should be and who you are and who their Jesus is and how, how they would know. Mm. And a lot of it is based on stuff that didn't even ever happen or you would never like. Mm -hmm. uh, and, so, and stuff that can never happen. Yeah. Even. Like, you know, a lot of them say, where's what, you on your white horse? What, you know, why can't every eye see you? Like the Bible said. It's impossible for every eye to see. We live on a globe, a sphere. Some people point that way and other people point that way. It's impossible for you to even see the sun at the same time. <laughs> so how are you going to see an individual at the same time? It's impossible, right? They're wanting even what is impossible to be true, mm -hmm. right? And it's never going to happen. So they're going to be always disappointed mm -hmm. unless they change their concept of what's possible. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So, yes, I, I sort of see it as unfortunate that most people are not very logically thinking when it comes to the issue of my identity. They're not thinking in any logical manner. No scientific, no scientific thought is ever engaged when it comes to these questions because all that they are interested in doing is trying to prove that I'm not Jesus. Well, that's like trying to prove that I am. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Give that up too. <laughs> it's actually impossible for you to prove that I'm not Jesus unless... You were present in my first century life and through my spirit world and you know I'm not Jesus. That's the only way you're going to prove that I'm not Jesus, in fact. So ironically, the only way that I can prove that I am is also the only way that you can prove that I'm not. I find that quite ironic and quite Logical. funny in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I would suggest to people is to even perhaps give up this whole concept of trying to pr prove or not prove that I'm Jesus and, and just listen to what has to be said and work out whether it makes sense, whether it's logical, whether it's loving, whether it's truthful. And make a choice. And make a choice. If you want to listen If you want to listen, don't. If you don't want to listen, don't. Yeah. It doesn't worry me. It's only your life that's going to be affected by not listening. Like, so, so, and that's your choice. You're allowed to make that choice. God's giving you the right and the will to make that choice. You're allowed to do it. You don't have to believe that I'm Jesus, so stop trying to force me to believe that I'm not. You don't have to believe that I'm not, so try, stop trying to make me believe that I'm not. You know, like, I don't have to, I, I know what I know, and there's no, no, no one is going to easily change my mind. When I say easily change my mind, they're not ever going to change my mind. I know who I am. I remember my experience. 
I know who I am. It's just like if someone come along to Igor and said, Igor, you're not Igor, you know. You go, well, hang on a sec, I, you know, I know my experience, I remembered my life, I've known everything about my life. Of course I'm Igor, you know, like I know who I am. And, and, and he'd just laugh at them probably, say, hey, you know. And unless they had some, some kind of evidence and some kind of proof that they could bring people in to say, well, actually you were born this person and, and you know, you were given to your mother and all that, you know, unless there was some kind of documentary proof or proof from an individual perspective, it would be impossible to accept that he isn't Igor mm -hmm. from his own perspective. Just like it's impossible for me to accept that I'm not Jesus from my own perspective. So um, I suggest to people that they start thinking a bit more logically about these kind of questions. And like I do feel that at some point in the future, not only will the 14, the 12 who have returned with me, who are currently present on earth, um, will be able to verify my identity. But also I will have very many visitors who come from the spirit world who will be able to verify my identity to the average people on earth. But that can only happen after I go through a process of love that I have to go through where I release all of my fears and I deal with all of my identity issues myself beforehand. Then it can all happen. And only then can it all happen. But even when that does happen, it may be that the average person on earth still doesn't accept it because of the things we've already mentioned. Mm.